I define the southeast. I'll, I'll define the southeast as um, everywhere but Atlanta and, and south, uh, say, Miami Beach or South Florida, because those two markets are completely different. Uh, trophy properties, really high-quality properties, international investment in the southeast really has been focused on those areas. And the only real reason that some of the uh, bigger investors, institutional investors, even dropped down into the tertiary markets or the secondary markets of the southeast was because there was no product available in the 24-hour cities or in the bigger markets. And so there was a pressure for that money to go somewhere. And so it began to make its way in. I mean, I don't, um, it was not very long ago that markets like Charleston, South Carolina, or Greenville, Spartanburg, South Carolina, or even Raleigh were being invested in at all by the institutional investors uh, because they just felt like those markets were too small and they weren't deep enough that in case something ever happened to their tenants or their income flow, was the market deep enough to ever recover? And the traditional answer until the 2000s was no, they weren't. So money is what pushed those uh, institutional investors into those smaller southeastern markets. It's significant now because now that we're trying to find a new normal and everyone will have different underwriting standards and criteria, which should tend to make more sense based upon where your money's being invested and the safety of that investment considering the risk management component of that um, and, and probably a little bit less um, speculation on potential growth of net income or reduction of cap rates, um, institutional investors I don't think will look at the Southeast the same. I think you'll see a lot less institutional investment in the Southeast other than in specific areas. So those rules, in my opinion, will be completely rewritten for the tertiary and the secondary markets. So, who is active, who does have money that's uh, waiting on the sidelines. Like I said, there's very little activity. Uh, there's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines. In the Southeast, most of that money is REIT money. Um, until the CMBS markets come back, and we're starting to see a little bit of flow back into the markets, but that's not gonna land in the Southeast anytime soon, in my opinion. There is a lot of money on the sidelines, and they're waiting for that recognition of the quality assets that aren't considered trophy assets, which is the majority of the Southeast but for those quality of assets to really get marked down to market and what they're really worth. So when you see a $25 million asset, which is probably about the average size of a decent asset in the Southeast, a 25 to $50 million asset, when you see that those have come down in value by 40%, and then when you begin to look at what the, uh, what the economics behind that investment are in terms of its ability to yield income, over a period of time, and is it in a growing market? Um, there's just until we have a until we have a reckoning of this of all the debt that's out there and all the assets that are underwater. No one's going to trade in those markets. So right now, it's a long story for a short answer. The activity is in distressed notes, mostly a lot of one-off note acquisition in the southeast with the regional and the community banks, and in the trophy assets, the highest quality assets. Um, we're starting to see some shopping centers, uh, high quality shopping centers with good quality tenants uh, turn. Uh, a lot of the medical REITs have been um, active in the Southeast. That's probably the one area the REITs have been active. So high quality assets, distressed assets, but mostly on the note basis. And everything in between is on the sidelines until we really see a, a true mark to market on that until the banks begin to really recognize what they have and begin to act on those and release those. And it, it might mean some defaults and some foreclosures. Um, until those come out in the market, there's a lot of people sitting in the sidelines. Uh, what we're seeing in the Carolinas specifically is a lot of, um, of um, family money, a lot of foundations, and a lot of private equity funds that are all on the sidelines. They've all created criteria of what they want to invest in with certain uh, rates of returns, and the rates of returns are not too different than they were before. I mean, whereas before we might have seen expectations uh, above 20% internal rates of return, we're seeing more in the 16 to to 20% rates of returns. But if you really look at the assets mm -hmm. and their ability to grow, unless you buy those right, unless you buy them at a good price today, there's no way that the income is going to increase in those to be able to support that kind of return. So everyone, again, everyone is on the sidelines. The other thing I'd say about the REITs is, um, in the Southeast, I think we'll see the REITs jump back into the investment grade product when the jobs start to come back. 
that's one of the areas that we tend to see the REITs really looking at as an economic indicator for where they need to be investing in this new economy. So if you look at where the jobs are in the Southeast, and remember earlier I'd said you take Atlanta out and you take um, South Florida out, and you look at the rest of the Southeast as kind of pretty much very similar. Well, the jobs aren't being created in South Florida and the jobs aren't being created in Atlanta. Those are two of the areas that have been the hardest hit. And there's not been a real recovery in terms of job uh, growth in those markets. So that's one of the reasons why I think the REITs have not come back into those markets, especially Atlanta, yet. Um, now just, I think the general feeling is everyone feels like we've hit bottom in terms of the economy, uh, but we haven't seen a lot of growth. So how long are we going to bounce along the bottom? And one of those indicators is job growth. Uh, job growth in the Carolinas has been strong, but the job growth in, the, in those, particularly in Greenville, Spartanburg, uh, several thousand jobs have been announced just in the last couple of months, a lot in expansion, some in new, uh, new industry coming to the market, but those are markets that don't have institutional grade quality assets. Mm -hmm. They have good quality assets, and they, you could at one time consider them institutional grade, but if you begin to apply uh, true economics to them with the criteria that an institutional investor should have about their potential to withstand downturns, their exit strategy, um, if tenant, tenant volatility and being able to backfill space, those markets just aren't big enough and they're not showing enough uh, strength yet or girth yet to get um, anyone comfortable investing there. So hence, uh, very few and very, very few investors are in and very few dollars are trading, but a lot of money on the sidelines and we are also starting to see some capital availability as well. There's a lot of money that's out there, much more than the assets that are out there that are available, but nobody's stepping in. On the debt side, what we're seeing is life companies are back. They're lending money on a much more um, traditional basis, 65 to 75% loan to value. Loan to value being a true loan to value in today's economy, uh, which means if you kind of run through the numbers on that, it's a pretty staggering difference if you took a $10 million asset um, in 2007 and let's say you were able to obtain 90% uh, financing, 10% equity. Uh, $9 million of debt into that asset. In today's economy, that $10 million asset, if it has been marked down 40%, is worth $6 million. And if debt is coming in at 60 or 70% loan to true value, then 70% of that is $4.2 million. Think about the difference in where the investment, uh, the, where the debt markets are mm -hmm. in an investment in the Southeast. $4.2 million is the new number as opposed to $9 million. Well, what happened to the other $5 million? You know, for a lot of assets that were acquired in 2006, 2007, that money is still on their books. What are they gonna do with it? I mean, there's nothing they can do with it. So we've created this huge equity chasm uh, that there's just, no one's willing to step in and fill until that $10 million asset gets marked down. So in the Southeast, where we don't have the velocity of change like they do in the larger cities, I think that it's a, it's where, this is a three to four year process. 